Okay, this is my bonus video for today. I want to talk to you a little bit about my insi insights that I have gleaned from my experience with this uh, sarcoma so far. And it's just something that I see and I sense and I feel about finding yourself or if you hear from somebody that you know and care about who has been diagnosed or who has um, some other life-changing ailment, disease, some things that might help you being with them or help you for yourself. I think one of the things is that there are so many different emotions that we can go through. And of course, everybody's different because it depends upon who you are, where you are in your life, how philosophical you are, and how scared you are. Because it's a very, very scary diagnosis. I think no matter what inroads they've made uh, toward cancer treatment, and there are many, many, many people living uh, very long and productive lives after cancer, as witnessed by so many of my wonderful subscribers and viewers. But I think hearing the diagnosis that you have cancer, whatever kind it is, feels as if you've just been given your death warrant. You have cancer, you're gonna die. Not everybody's gonna have that feeling, but it's, it's, it's daunting because most of us, I suspect, do not spend a great deal of our time wondering when we're gonna die. I would think, I'd hope that most of us don't do that on a regular basis. And I know some people are very fearful about it. And I know I certainly used to be years ago, but I think Faced with this, you are faced with your own mortality, and it's something that you have to think about. Somebody is telling you you have a disease that could kill you. Terrifying. So, I'm going to talk about some of the some of the emotions. I went through, not denial. I never went through denial because. I, I mean, there it was when the doctor, for, well, the first indication was when I saw the report that my friends forced me to look at when it came in from the MRI. And when the report, that word, not suspicious of, um, not suggestive of, concerning for, something like that, Concerning for a sarcoma. What? I saw the word sarcoma, and I didn't know very much about sarcoma at the time, other than the fact that I thought I recalled that uh, Ted Kennedy's son had a sarcoma when he was a young, uh, young teenager. I didn't know much else about it, but I knew it was not a good word. I knew that it was some kind of cancer, and I knew that that could not be good. So of course the first thing is maybe they read it wrong, maybe there's a problem with it, maybe, 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 maybe. So at that point I had contacted the doctor who had kept telling me I had a lipoma and that everything was okay. And I insisted I was not waiting until he made an appointment to see me for him to discuss this with me. So his office told me that the doctor wanted me now to speak to a different kind of a surgeon. He wanted me to speak to a, um, a surgical oncologist. Well, I'm not stupid. A surgical oncologist, I've got cancer. They recommended two doctors to me. They didn't know how to spell either name. They didn't know what towns they were in. They had no phone numbers. And they gave me the names 
with no spellings and I didn't even know how to spell the names, couldn't find them online. And ultimately I said to myself, okay, self, this very well-meaning perhaps gentleman was wrong about a lot of things. He looked up these doctors on whatever, whatever source he has, or maybe he didn't. Maybe he had his staff do that. Whatever it was, I thought it's time for me to do my own investigating. So I got online. I spent a great deal of time and I found my own doctors and I interviewed a few. But when I first went to my surgical oncologist, Dr. Crago, and I spoke to her the very first time she was deadpan. No, no sense of humor whatsoever, deadpan. Very sweet, very soft spoken. It's a good thing I have good hearing, but you had to really li listen intently to hear what she was saying. But she told me at the time that she wanted to schedule surgery for the end of March. This was in early March. She was racing to do surgery. And she's telling me that I have this huge sarcoma. I didn't know that. I thought the top half of this thing was one of my organs. That's how much I know and how well I can read an MRI. In any case, I sat there in her office going, and then she told me that she hoped I had somebody to cover me at work because it would probably take two months minimum for the recuperation. And I'm going, I don't. And I said, I, I have to work. I need, I need money. I, I can't not work. And I'd come through a six month period that was kind of tough because everything I touched was going wrong. I had told you about that previously. And that was where um, everything was not only going wrong, but I kept getting this message when I questioned it, why is this happening? The message, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And that was a very scary message for me. So there was denial in the sense of I couldn't believe this was happening to me, though I knew at that point that it was. Never once in my particular journey did I say think or feel, why me? I'm you. I'm your sister, your father, your brother, your aunt, your friend, your lover, your husband or wife. I'm you. It can happen to any of us. What would make me so special that I would think it either couldn't or shouldn't happen to me? Who the hell am I? So that was not one of my issues, but it can be, I suspect, for some people. So to get back to my insights and, and dealing with the emotions of it, it's interesting, one of my subscribers uh, had mentioned to me that her uh, husband is going through his own battle and that he is suffering at the moment from depression and it's significant. It happens. And he has every right to those feelings. His life has been turned upside down. He has to be worried on so many levels about so many things. And my advice to any of you dealing with anybody you care about who's going through this or yourself, be kind to yourself. My advice to you is let the greatest gift you can give somebody is to let them talk let them feel, let them be morose if they need to, let them yell and scream if they need to, let them cry, let them recoil into themselves for a while. Just allow them to have their feelings. Don't negate their feelings. They're entitled to every one of them. Another thing, you know, it's funny with Linda. Linda is um, a great friend to me and has been for a very long time, but we're on a different level at this point. And she's, she's the kind of person, she flatly refuses, by the way. I keep asking her uh, if she will appear on the video that I'd love you to meet her and that you've asked me and she flatly refuses. So I can't violate that trust and the feeling that she has. It's her right. 
I think she's foolish, but it's her right. She is not good at relating to people on a deeply emotional level. She'll be there, she'll do, she'll worry, she'll care. But the deep emotional stuff, it's hard for her, very hard for her. One day, I just sat in the car when we were getting ready to go, and I just, I had tears in my eyes. And I said, I can't do this. I can't do this. And I said, I'm scared. And she said, of course you are. And she grabbed my hand and she said to me, I'm worried too. She said, I know you're worried. I know you're scared. Just having somebody to reach out and hold my hand and validate my feelings was very important. You can do that for somebody. If you're the patient, reach out to somebody. Share it if you can, because if you share it, it makes it easier. It's a very isolating road that we're on. It can be very, very isolating. And as I say, it's a scary thing because even when you get, uh, if, they, if they give you a great prognosis after all is said and done or things, or they got it all and everything looks terrific, you still have the guillotine hovering right above your head for every one of those checkups, every one of those MRIs, every one of those tests, PET scan, CAT scan, whatever it is, it's not easy. Give yourself a break if it's you and if it's somebody you care about, understand if they have moments. They may get angry. They may lash out at moments. Allow them. And you as a caregiver or a caretaker or somebody who is there for them, you need your own time to vent or share it with somebody else or just get away from it for a little bit because it's hard on you too and I recognize that there is nothing easy about this road I know whatever my outcome is in the end that one of the things that I was clearly meant to do was to share this journey because some people have already told me that it's made a difference in their lives in the way that they can react to other things and it makes them feel stronger in their own situations and I'm grateful for the gift of having been able to do that. That is a gift to me. So I'm so happy that I have been able to be that. There really is so much more and I will share so much more with you. And um, the interesting thing is I, I kind of have to laugh because with the last two treatments coming up, I have decided that I found out different people are off different days and I want each of the people in my team to understand that I appreciate them, that whatever I've gone through and however difficult it has been for me, I want them to know that I appreciate everything that they have done in any way to make the unbearable just a little bit more bearable. And I think that they've probably learned something in the process as well because they've seen how different it is for me when I know what's going on. For me, that, that's an issue. When I know what's going on, I'm not gonna tense up for not knowing what's going on and why is it taking longer and why are my muscles tightening up and why, how much longer do I have? They tell me. And if they tell me, I try desperately to relax into it. So that's a really, really important thing. So hopefully in this has been a lesson for them as well. I'm still in my crazy optimism, perhaps, looking for a happy ending. I pray that I have a happy ending, and we'll see, because you'll be on the journey with me. I know some people have, you know, just don't have the desire or are going through their own things and just don't want to have this kind of intense emotional stuff that they're watching, so I have 
lost some of my viewers to perhaps just be in the background until I start to post things that are, are more my normal, or at least the old normal. We'll see what the new normal turns out to be. But as I say, I will have a video going up. It is, I'm, I'm editing it as we speak, and hopefully I'll have it up by tonight. And that was a get ready with me and just a chat uh, that I did on Saturday. So on that note, I bid you a fond farewell for this moment in time. And I say to you that you are a gift to the people in your life who need you. And uh, they are a gift to you, whatever they're going through. Take care. I love you all.